My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to take a look at 10 tips and tricks in Photoshop that you're absolutely going to love, especially if you're a photographer, things like the bird's eye view, painting selections, the banana tool, and a bunch of other little things like color range sliders, blend if sliders, and other blend mode goodness. Eh, let's just jump into Photoshop and check it out. All right, here we are. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about is bird's eye view. And you can get bird's eye view anytime you're zoomed into an image. You just press the letter H and click and drag. And Photoshop will zoom back out to show you the entire image. Give you this box that you can drag around. You drop it where you want to go. Hold down the letter H. Maybe we want to come down here to the planets. And we see that, yeah, maybe we could have blurred the edge of that planet. Made it look a little bit better. Or maybe added some more shadowing down under there to make it look good. Then we can go up to our eyes and see maybe we would have adjusted a couple other little things. And then go back to our little glowing cup of galaxy tea. And I won't keep you waiting long. Tip number two. It's more of an Easter egg, but it's fun all the same. The banana tool here. I get a lot of questions about this little sucker. Uh, if you click what you normally see there, which is this edit toolbar button, you're going to have this dialog box that appears. Now, when you press the done button in the dialog box, well, here I'll show you. This is what you see. Let's go back in there. Let's click and go edit toolbar. Now, if you hold down the shift key while you click done, you are going to have the banana tool. If you hate the banana tool, you go back into edit toolbar, hold down the alt or option key and press the word done. And you're back to just your regular triple dots. And on to number three, sometimes it's useful to be able to straight up paint a selection like we're looking at this wonderful polar bear, but maybe he's got a little green yellow on his underside and we wanna just clean him up, make him look a little brighter. We can use the quick mask mode and we can paint a selection. But the trick is you want to double click on quick mask mode button and change color indicates to selected areas. I also prefer painting in the color green. The default is a red. I prefer green. It just sticks out more, I think. But the key is go with selected areas. That way, when you grab the brush tool and you just start painting, anything I paint over, well, we need to make sure we've entered into quick mask mode by actually clicking on it. But now anything that I paint, and that is now the default setting, so you don't have to change it every time you use quick mask mode. But I quickly paint a selection over our little polar bear. And when I hit the letter Q, it's going to load that as a selection. Then I could do something like drop a black and white adjustment layer on there, change the blend mode maybe to screen to brighten him up as well as desaturate him a little bit and just reduce the saturation a little. And there's our polar bear before and there's our polar bear after. Now you saw me adjusting the brush there really quickly using the bracket keys and that's a great way to adjust the brush. But my fourth little tip here is the heads up brush size and even color changer. And you can get to that on the Mac by holding down the control and option key and click and drag side to side to change the size of the brush or up and down to change the hardness of the brush. And you get this nice little overlay that's telling you, look, hey, you're right there, you're at 28% hardness and a diameter of 384. I can bring it up to 745 and then make it a little uh, softer or 5% hardness, and that maybe is just the perfect brush for me. Now, if you're on the PC, you want to hold down Alt and right click, and you can drag up and down and left and right and make the same changes. Now, you also have a heads up display color changer just as a little bonus tip here. If you hold down Control, Option, and Command on the Mac and you click and drag, you get this whole game that shows up, and you can choose your hue and then the brightness and saturation of that particular hue you've selected. Again, on the PC, it's slightly different. You want to hold down shift and alt and right click to get that heads up color picker. All right, this is a sponsor video. So I want to take a quick break and thank our sponsor today. That's squarespace.com. I've had my personal photography site with Squarespace for years and it's awesome. It's so easy to edit and update. It's a mobile friendly site. Uh, so your website's going to look perfect on your phone, your tablet, anywhere you see it. They've got some amazing templates you can choose from to just make a great looking site right from the start. It's got a great email campaign tool to market your website. They just make building a website, even building an online store incredibly easy so you can sell the stuff you make, whether you want to do e-commerce, build a portfolio, write a blog, or all of that stuff. You can do it. Check out squarespace.com slash tutvid. Uh, sign up for the free trial. And when you're ready to launch, again, squarespace.com slash tutvid. Use the coupon code tutvid, T-U-T-V-I-D, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. We love you very much for supporting us and sponsoring a couple videos for us every now and again. Let's get back to the video. And moving along to the fifth thing I want to show you. This is the color range slider in hue saturation. So let's say we're looking at this photo. We want to change her dress to pink and we want to do it quickly. You can add a hue saturation adjustment layer here. And I'm going to, I'm going to drag the properties over here so we can see what's going on. 
I can grab my little finger scrubby slider tool and I can click on the dress and it's going to select sort of an approximation of those colors as best as Photoshop is able to target. But when I click and drag, it just changes the saturation, not the hue. So I'm going to undo that. The, the key to change hue is hold down your command or control key. And then we're just going to rock it back to the left a little bit. We're going to make the dress more of a pink color. But we can see what's happening here is it's really targeting the shadows in her skin here on the back side of her arms. And it, it's doing a really good job picking up the dress, but we want it to be better. That's where this color range slider comes into play. The little, the, the, the light gray area between the two tick marks, that's where Photoshop is targeting. Any hue that falls in that little range is what's going to be swung here uh, as we've specified in our hue slider. And the two sort of medium gray areas to the left and right, it's fading out. So it's sort of messing around with the pinks and it's sort of messing around with the orange to yellow hue, uh, the orange to yellow hues. So what I'm going to do first is take the middle part and just slide it more toward the reds and say, look, Photoshop, really concentrate on the red heading and pink direction and really kind of fade yourself off of the oranges. Because I know the bulk of her skin tone probably falls from like here on the reds out to, you know, here on the yellows. So if I can tell hue saturation to ignore the bulk of that area, we're going to be doing pretty good. We're still not doing perfect though. You can see she's still got pink on the back of her arm from where the color is reflecting off the dress and her lipstick is just too close in color to the dress. But Photoshop has done a really nice job. At this point, we can just quickly grab the brush tool, make sure our foreground color is set to black and just go ahead and paint right over that underside of the arm. I can paint across her lips to bring her lipstick color back and then that shadow on that arm and that quickly we've gone ahead and changed the color of her dress, the hue of her dress, I should say. Let me see if I can dock my properties panel here. There we go. Now, tip number six, and this is just super useful for just about everything you're ever gonna do in Photoshop. Creating selections is a way of life, and if you're gonna be dragging out selections, before you let go of your selection, you can hold down the space bar and move your selection around. But that's not all. Not only can you hold a selection, or, or move a selection, I should say, by holding down the space bar key, but you can do the same with the pen tool. So let's say you're uh, retouching the color of a car or getting rid of some little dings and dents and dead flies and things like that on the side panel of a car, and you place one point, and let's say we wanna just curve it up to the top here, but we realize the top anchor point isn't in place. Well, before we let go, hold down the space bar, and you can move the anchor point before you really commit to it with the pen tool. So move around here and let's say I'm like, ah, you know what? I actually want to pinch that in a little bit tighter and have it come down to the back of her knuckles, something like that. And you can just go on and on and on and keep playing with your path just like that. And moving right along to tip number seven, never forget that you can combine a simple adjustment layer with a blend mode to do all sorts of awesome things. Let me give you an example here. This image is kind of low contrast. How do we boost the contrast? Well, you might say S curve with the with the curves adjustment or bump in the input points on a levels adjustment. You can simply add any adjustment layer you like and set the blend mode to something like overlay. And there you go. Quick and easy contrast adjustment. And of course, you still can use your opacity slider to just back the contrast off to get exactly as much as you want. This works with all sorts of things. You can use a screen blend mode to brighten an image up. You can use a multiply blend mode to darken an image up. All sorts of really cool things you can do don't sleep on pairing an adjustment layer with a simple blend mode to make big changes in Photoshop. Now, tip number eight is using curves with a luminosity blend mode. So one of the things that this does, let me bump this back to 100%. Let's say we come into curves and we say, you know what, we're going to boost our contrast like this. All right, now it's a very contrasty image, but you can see it's also kind of tweaked the saturation of the image kind of a lot. We can go ahead and say, you know what, set this to the luminosity blend mode. And what that's going to do is boost contrast without really playing with the colors. See the difference there? There is just normal blend mode and there's the luminosity blend mode. So it's leaving us with these more desaturated tones that we had originally if we go and look back at the original image. So a lot that you can do there with the curves blend mode. I want to jump to another image really quickly and show you this in another example. Let's go curves blend mode here. And let's say we just want to darken this image up, all right? We're going to go ahead and use the multiply blend mode. You can see this gives our background nice darkness, but it really makes the image look out of balance. 
uh, mainly because her jacket's losing all sorts of detail and she's just generally too dark in the foreground. Well, if we examine the original image, the background is very, very light and her jacket and her blouse and her hair and all the facial features are very dark. So we can double click on her curves blend mode and this is going to open up the layer style dialog box and we have these awesome little blend if sliders. So we can say, hey, look, if the underlying layer is darker, we want you to just ease up on that effect. So we're gonna blend this by just holding down alter option and clicking on that slider to split it. And we're gonna drag the split back until we see our shadows opening up. See how dark the shadows are? Now when I split this, you're gonna see my shadows opening up, opening up, it's gonna give the image kind of this faded effect and then we just reduce the overall opacity a little bit and then commit the change and we can do a quick before and after. You can see how little her jacket is now affected by this curves adjustment layer darkening the entire image. And that's just by pairing our curves adjustment layer with a blend mode with blend if sliders. So there's a lot you can do with just plain adjustment layers when you mix all that stuff together. Uh, just you have to understand I want to take some of that darkening away from the darker parts of the image. We'll go ahead and lift it away from dark bits on the underlying layer. Maybe I also want to do it uh, for some of the brighter areas, but the problem is then it's going to not be darkening up the really, really bright stuff in the background. We can go ahead and hit OK and commit any changes that we make. Now, tip number nine that I want to show you is particularly useful for photographers. It's basically the way that I sharpen all my images now when I'm not doing sort of a stacked method of sharpening where the face is getting one amount of sharpening and clothing or background details are getting another level of sharpening. If you're just doing overall global sharpening, this is a great little sharpening trick. We have, of course, the camera raw filter available to us. Now, uh, this is just a regular bitmap uh, image, so it's not any kind of crazy a smart object or anything happening like that. Let me just bring in the camera roll dialog box so we can see the whole thing. If we come over here to our detail tab, we have our four general masking sliders. If we hold down alter option when using any of these sliders, we get sort of the secret sharpening mode in camera raw. So if I click and drag the sharpening slider, it's gonna convert my image to black and white. Now, the rule is you wanna just double click your magnifying glass to zoom into 100%. Anytime you're sharpening an image, it's a good idea to see it at 100%. Hold down alter option and drag over. Black and white doesn't allow you to be distracted by all the color and everything. You can hold down alter option for radius, which is gonna give you this kind of cool, high pass overlay look at just the details of your image. And then detail gives you another sort of high pass, sort of embossed type look. I'm gonna reduce detail a little bit. The most important one I think, and I'll actually zoom out for this once the sharpening is done, the masking slider, if you hold down alter option, it's gonna show you a mask. The bright areas of the mask are the areas where the sharpening will be applied. The black or darker gray areas, there's not gonna be much of any sharpening applied. And the reason that that's important is because if I zoom in back here, we can see that a lot of the detail that you see back here, it's really just noise. So if you sharpen that stuff, you're just going to be making the grain and noise in your image more pronounced. So by holding down alter option and using and really honing in your sharpening with the masking that you have here in the sharpening area, of camera raw. That's a mouthful. You can really just help uh, get nicer, cleaner, sharpened images uh, without blowing out noise. And then, you, of course, you hit OK and boom, you've got your sharpened image. And we did that underneath our curves multiply adjustment layer. And here is the image that we have. Now, the last little trick that I want to show you here in Photoshop, it's more of a housekeeping thing. It's just something that I always found really annoying. And it's something you can shut off in Photoshop. If you go to your Photoshop menu on the Mac, on PC, it's going to be edit preferences somewhere down around here. But here on the Mac, we've got Photoshop preferences general and here in this dialog box we have the ability to disable that annoying sort of dumb home screen that you get I don't like it I like to be able to open Photoshop and get to it so I make sure I disable that and uh, if you want to work a little bit faster in Photoshop just go ahead and disable it as well it doesn't hurt you'll be just fine. So that's gonna be it for this one, folks. Make sure you use the link on the screen to check out my tutorial on the secrets to matching color and light in Photoshop for composites. I think you'll really like it. And as I always say, I love all the people, but I especially love the people like you who watch the videos all the way till the end. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tuckvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.